had to cultivate the ground. He planted a vineyard. Vineyard means there's fruit. One day he drank some wine he had made and he became drunk and lay naked inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that this father, his father was naked and went outside and told his brothers. Then Shem and Japheth took a robe, held it over their shoulders and back into the tent to cover their father. And as they did this, they looked the other way so they would not see him. You, sometimes it's so hard to understand this passage until you understand how biblical authors use the hyperlinks. And the, you know, the Genesis writer was hyperlinking Noah's fall to Adam's and Eve's fall. They actually fall. You know, secondly, you know, Noah, first thing, Noah plants a vineyard. And in a vineyard, something grows. And what grows in a vineyard? It's like a garden. Garden of Eden. There's, there's, secondly, just like Adam and Eve, Noah consumed the fruit of that vineyard. And too much. He became drunk. Something happened. And exactly, we're not very sure. But in the ancient context, it means a lot, which we do not have time to discuss here. But here's what we're trying to say. The Genesis author was saying, Noah is, was just like Adam. You know, he, he's not the promised victor who will crush the serpent's head. Are you appreciating week per week if you're attending? It's all hyperlink. He is not that promised person or victor who will crush the, servant, the serpent's head. And as Jesus' followers, this is beautiful. We believe that Jesus is like Noah. He was the righteous one. And He was sent by the Father to save mankind. But Jesus was not like Noah. Let me explain. Noah. Noah was the righteous one. He was saved. And the rest of the guilty received judgment. Yes. Jesus is the righteous one. He received the judgment so that the guilty can be saved. Noah was riding a tree, a wooden boat, above the chaotic waters, like the New Eden. Yeah? Noah rode a tree above the chaotic waters. And they were saved. But Jesus was crucified on a tree. That is the fulfillment of our faith. That ushers in the new creation reality that we are in. That Jesus offers us new creation. New life. New choices. And that is, I think, Andy Patzel, the theologian, says it so beautifully. Read it. The flood was violent, but it wasn't the work of a violent God. Rather, this God took on flesh and died a violent death at the hands of violent men. A death that became the very means He would use to save His enemies. May I ask you this time? You learned something today? We appreciate our Bible bar, the context, and we're just starting. It's beautiful that we get to discuss this in the feast. It's a dream actually that we get to understand some more and, and we will grow together in our faith. Amen? But as we end, I want you to look at you know the heart of God in this story. And as we worship, I want you to look at the heart of God. He is all powerful, immovable, immutable. He created everything. And in 
the story of the incarnation of Jesus, He relates to us and He allows Himself to be moved. He willingly enters into our world. He is not a God high above the heavens, just waiting for you to scramble, to, to suffer, to, to drown in your sin and shame and guilt. No. Our God offers you a new life. And He got crucified on the tree so that we may live Realize how far we are from the Lord. But today, 